Midjourney is a text-to-image AI tool that can generate images from plain text. The tool is often used to generate artwork in various styles. In this video, we will see how it can deal with regular UI tasks such as creating UI screens, app icons, product images and mascots. To make our analysis more specific, we will generate UI assets for a particular product type, a food delivery app. To use Midjourney, visit their website, click join the beta and follow the instructions to create your account. Once you do that, you can join any channel with the prefix newbies and start generating images by typing a text prompt. We will start with generating UI screens. The most important thing that we need to do when working with AI tools is to write clear prompts. A prompt is a text string that you submit to an AI tool so that it can generate an image for you. The prompt should clearly specify what you want to see. When writing a prompt, think about how you will describe your design to an actual person. And write down an exact sentence. Turn this sentence into tokens, short phrases separated by commas. The tokenized format of a prompt works good for mid-journey because it helps you trim all unnecessary words, while keeping essential contextual information. For example, in the context of a food delivery app, the tokenized prompt might include tokens like food delivery mobile app, Dribbable, and Behance. By default, Midjourney generates four options for you to choose from. You can upscale a particular option. Let's see what the upscaled version of the first design will look like. If you compare the upscaled version to the preview, you might notice that Midjourney doesn't only increase the size and quality of the image but it also slightly modifies the layout. For example, the upscaled version doesn't feature a red button in the top left corner of the screen. You likely notice two significant problems in the images generated by the tool, gibberish text and corrupted food preview images. Unfortunately, these problems are relevant not only for UI screens but for many kinds of images generated by Midjourney. Our first take wasn't perfect, so you might wonder how to modify our prompt to achieve better results. It's worth saying that there is no optimal strategy for writing prompts. You need to experiment with different tokens to find an optimal solution. That's why you should aim for at least a few tries before you come up with a decent output. Let's modify our prompt to see how the tool will react to it. This time we will mention a token, Figma because we will likely want to use UI layouts in the design tool. The better we articulate our intention, the more relevant result we will get from AI. This set of images is slightly better than the previous one. Let's see what the upscaled version of the first design will look like. This visual asset looks more like something we can use in our design. The layout has a clear visual hierarchy of elements. Let's make another take on UI design using Midjourney. This time we will remove tokens Dribbable and Behance, leaving only Figma, but also add a parameter quality set to 2 to increase the quality of the images. The third option looks promising. Let's upscale it to see more details. You can see that the results that Midjourney generates, even after the third try, cannot be used without refinement from a human designer. Nevertheless, this raw output can be very helpful during the early stages of the design process because it serves a visual inspiration. For example, it's relatively easy to create a mood board of AI-generated images and use it as a reference for visual designers to create a proper visual language. It's also vital to mention that we've used a very general prompt for UI design. If we want to see a particular screen, such as a restaurant search page, we should clearly specify it in a prompt as a token so that the system can get us a more relevant result. Let's see if Midjourney can help us generate an app icon. An app icon is a simple yet very powerful element because it communicates the idea of what the app is all about, as well as creates a first impression to users. Even before users start to use a product, the icon is the first thing they see, and its level of craftsmanship directly impacts how users will perceive a product. Since we are designing a mobile app, we need to clearly specify the token iOS app as well as mention that we want to see high-quality visual assets, tokens high resolution and high quality. And because our app is about food delivery, we might want to mention one particular type of food, burger. Midjourney generated a set of ultra-realistic icons. Let's upscale the second option. The style that Midjourney uses for icons is great, but it might not work for an actual project because many designers prefer to use minimalist icons. 
let's give it a second try using a slightly different prompt. We need to mention tokens like minimalism and flat design to signal AI that we want to see simple icons. Now the output looks like something we can use in an actual project. Let's upscale the first option. We've got a nicely looking flat icon of burger. Product images are next on our list. Product images are images that we will show on product pages. Since we design a food ordering app, our image will be photos or illustrations of food. Let's ask Midjourney to generate images for us. Midjourney generated solid images, but they have one major pitfall. They are placed on a dark background, and this can be a problem because it will require extra work to extract an object from the background. But we can use a simple trick, ask Midjourney to use a transparent or white background. The first image looks great, let's upscale it. Now, all we need to do is to remove the background from this image. To do that, we can use online services like remove.bg. Upload the image to remove.bg and download the ready to use visual asset. Let's see if Midjourney can help us with promo illustrations. Promo illustrations are versatile visual assets that can be used both inside the app and on a website. When creating an illustration, we want to communicate that our food is delicious. So we need to mention it in a prompt. It is also worth showing a human trying our product. Photos or illustrations of happy customers can increase a product's conversion rate. The cool thing is that the images are generated in different styles, from watercolor painting to highly realistic photo illustration. But it is evident that Midjourney had a hard time pairing happiness with eating. Let's upscale the second image to see if the upscaled version will look better. You likely notice another problem with the images that Midjourney generates, the problem with legs and fingers. The tool often adds an extra leg or finger when it generates images of people. Yet, in our example, the tool removed fingers and modified the human hand to make it look like a claw. Can Midjourney help us with a mascot? A mascot is a graphical object used to represent a business. A well-crafted mascot helps people remember a brand and communicates a certain mood. Let's ask Midjourney to generate an image of a mascot for a food delivery company mentioning a particular style, Japanese. Midjourney generated a few nice examples of mascots, but only the fourth option can be used with minimal modification. So, can Midjourney replace UI designers? No, at least not right now. The outputs the tools generate are very rough and often require refinement from designers. Midjourney is also very dependent on the prompt. The quality of output it provides can depend drastically on the prompts you provide. But it doesn't mean this tool has no place in our toolkit. The tool can be beneficial during the early phases of a product design process, such as ideation and visual exploration. Midjourney can be especially useful for mood boarding. It can help a team to compare a lot of visual styles before they can commit to one particular style. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Thank you.